Every time you build a monument based on exceptional moments, the revival dies. Because God is not going to keep the church in a revival mode. God wants to keep you and the church in a transformation mode. You are transformed by Christ. You are transformed by the Word. You are transformed by prayer. In revival, people will forget. But in transformation, it becomes your lifestyle. So we are um, continuing in the series of uh, Mr. Pharaoh and Moses. The book of Exodus is going to be for some time because you know my intention. The Lord spoke to me very clearly that I'm supposed to teach um, the, uh, how the remnant for us, even now, it could be. I think we cannot deny the fact that the church is becoming a remnant. We are thought to be very old-fashioned. Too holy, ostracized in a certain way, put away. Your opinions are no longer relevant because you are not current anymore with what is going on. If you cry and pray something wrong, like what we heard Brother Mac, and even it applies to many, you can pray but don't cry, don't become hysterical. But you can cry and weep and become hysterical at the celebrities. but not to God. Are you with me? So, the emotion aspect of responding to God has been taken away. Systematically, it has built up to a point that it has shaped a culture. But Spirit of God, you see, the Spirit of God, He always comes upon His people. When He wants you to cry, He will move it. He will break our emotions because there is, a, uh, there is a heavenly magic in tears when it comes before the presence of Jesus. Amen. Uh, I love to, I, I, I have a Bible that is hiding somewhere, I cannot tell, because uh, the moment I say it's Michael and Vicky will go into my library and start looking, which one did he say? You know? uh, a Bible that is filled with tears, all watered down. Those precious foundational years of weeping before the presence of God. Praying over the promises. You know, there are many times you have heard these testimonies when people, you have said that nobody believes in you, right? My point is, do you believe in yourself? Never mind who believes in you or not. You must believe what God is telling about you. It it all starts with you, you see. When you fail believing in yourself, then forgive others who don't believe you, that it's okay. Don't bring them into testimony points. Because the first guy whom's supposed to believe when God speaks about you and your future is you. And that cr- it takes you back into testimony. And I, I, I like the testimony even today. Um, uh, Charlene, yes, Sister Charlene was uh, giving about uh, Tekoa that God has his different agents to respond for different things. I want to also thank the Lord for the women's ministry who have uh, been bringing food to the different mothers who have given birth and you just bring food and they have been visiting uh, Leah, Leah Shore. Uh, she's living in Denver, Colorado. Eh, hey, not Colorado, <laughs> Denver, North Carolina. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, when I was driving there, it, 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 it looked like I was driving to Colorado, man. It was going everywhere. Yeah. And then finally, I was in Denmark, North Carolina. Not too bad, one hour plus. But, uh, but uh, they were so thankful that the church family was going that far. You know, so I'm, I'm, I'm thankful to each one taking that opportunity to demonstrate what Jesus is. I'm also thankful that we are no longer pinpointing at the pastor. Did pastor come? See, the church is... The, it's not the pastor only, it is every one yes, of us yes. doing different things to demonstrate the love of Christ. And I'm thankful for that. 
that he's not the idol in this church. God is our God. And do you know, Jesus is not an idol. Do you know that, right? Because when you worship in the natural someone, then he becomes the idol. But our God is a living God. He's not an idol. An idol means he's not God. But God is not an idol. But we use human phrases like that. Oh, Jesus is my idol. But there are human phrases. God is sacred. Therefore, you don't use the word idol and attach it to Elohim, God, Adonai. He is a sacred God. Goes beyond and point of idol. Amen. We are studying in the book of Exodus how the church is being called as a remnant, drawing the relevance, not because it's a parallel study, but because of the encounter I had with the Lord in these seven days when the Lord said, teach on the book of Exodus. And just like how Moses um, heard the voice from the burning bush, Right behind in the early morning when we were praying, it was very cold. And, and, and I, saw, I just put on uh, the, uh, what fire? Not campfire. <laughs> fireplace, sorry. Uh, my mind is all on Exodus at the moment. I put on the fireplace and we were praying. And as I was praying, there's one, the Lord was standing in front of me and I was listening this way. And then when he was talking about something, his voice entered into the fire and I turned around and looked at the fire while I was praying because the fire was talking. The, the voice was coming out from there. And uh, there were many things that the Lord said and then he said, teach on the book of Exodus. The parallel understanding of what is going to happen in the end times. And this morning the Lord also gave me the understanding why we are being stumbled. And who is stumbling us? Are you with me? So in the book of Exodus, we have been going through from chapter 1, and I don't know how far we are going to go, not necessarily the entire book, chapter by chapter. I will speak until the Spirit of God is lifted off me from that book. And you know, for uh, uh, the book of Jeremiah 31, we did quite well. Until every, uh, uh, the prophecy anointing came upon the announcers. Uh, <laughs> They could just announce which chapter I'm now talking on. So for the next few weeks, that same anointing will rest. We're going to go on the Exodus. Now, chapter 7, we are also learning. Now, before we go chapter 7, let's just go chapter 6, verse 13. The book of Exodus, chapter 6, verse 13. <clears throat> Prepare your heart also for later part of the afternoon where, we are, uh, sorry, later part of this morning, we are going to pray. And uh, anoint as the Lord tells me. He was here when our worship was going on. So thank you, uh, Pastor Jeff, that you picked up all the songs that created that moment. Yes. You know, uh, for me to just flow into that uh, anointing. He was here and he looked at all the elders. And so pray for them first. So we're going to pray for the elders and the, and, uh, uh, and the people who have come. The leaders we will push to next week. Okay? So is that okay? Yes. Okay. Why elders, don't ask me. If you want to be prayed for today, then you must become an elder today. <laughs> and that's what sometimes the Lord does. He, he comes and tells me what to do, and I just have to follow. Now, I don't have to think, because the Lord knows what He's doing, right? So that's my simple uh, proposition when I'm serving God. I don't have to pre-plan what I'm going to do. He knows what He is doing. I just have to take note today, okay, this is what I want to do, and just do accordingly. Amen. Uh, you are not here to please me as a person. I'm not there to please the flesh. We do what the Lord wants us to do. Amen. Now, Exodus chapter 6, verse 13. We, but the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron and gave them a charge. Say the phrase, gave them a charge. Now, I want you to understand how to respond to God when a charge is being given. Many times we think God can only speak to me when he gives suggestions to me. It is all nice. I suggest to you, even within husband and wife, boyfriend, girlfriends, relationships, as long as you don't say it with a tone of command, they are okay to do. The moment there is a tone, why are you giving that tone? My point is, if you love one another, what's wrong with the tone? What's wrong? Why, why is it can't? You, I can pinch you. Oh, that's so cute. No, it's not cute. It's painful. But so nice. 
So that's okay if the tone, isn't it? Hello? Yes. You know why you say that's a tone? Because there is an ego that is hiding in that love. When an ego is hiding in that love, you don't want the tone. You say, well, if you would say the same thing with love, I'll do it. But sometimes God is teaching us how to respond when He speaks as God Adonai. He's giving you a charge. Why? Because Moses was being confronted by Pharaoh. Then on the ground level, he heard all the words, murmurings from the people who brought this matter to him that they, they, they don't want all this problem, man. You are stirring the pot. You are creating more problems. You see, when God tells you to move, wow, nice, thank you, God. But you know, you start packing. You don't feel like thanking God anymore. The paperwork, the emotions, the shift. You are starting back from ground zero when he don't know what you're supposed to be doing. We heard that testimony today from, uh, uh, from uh, Chun. And there are many of you who have did the move without knowing what you're going to do. And for some, it's a big change because from a city, you're coming to a quiet area. From sitting, uh, singing all the hip songs, we are now uh, in church, we are coming back to hear, He talks with you. Man, you're bringing the whole church back to 45 years behind, man. I told Angela, this is a powerful tent uh, revival song. It's a very old song. She said, wow. Now, I don't know what she was saying, wow, to, to me, who know all that. <laughs> But it's a good song, brother. Praise God. I already selected 10 revival people in this church. Who am I going to bring into the 10 revival when we're going to have one? How's that? Brother Gary, you're surely you are inside, bro, I tell you. Amen. Now, I'm saying sincerely, please don't get me wrong, okay? I, I've learned how to enjoy everything. So when Moses was confront, being confronted by Pharaoh and the people didn't want to move, now this fellas got stuck because sometimes we get stuck on people's opinions. And to add more into your feeling as well, Lord, I don't like to follow too. Sometimes we can't overcome habitual sin because you don't want to overcome. You are just afraid to overcome. There is something in you that likes it. Everybody is praying for you to overcome, but you can't because you want to. And it takes a lot of guts and a lot of honesty to come before God and accept it and help ask Him, help me to remove that desire that is struggling because I want to. Are you with me? So when Moses, many churches struggle, many men of God, many people in your life, we struggle to follow God because there are people's opinion. What my wife is saying, what my children is saying, what my job is telling me. In fact, you want God Almighty to speak like a word from heaven and then everybody else's opinion matters now. Now you see, if their opinion matters and you just ask them what to do, you shouldn't come to God. Remember, God is not an idol. Hello? If it's an idol, then you can lay that opinion and wonder another day. Because they are idle, they don't have life, they don't matter. They, don't, they can't hear, they can't see, they don't feel. So it doesn't matter what it is. But a living God, when He tells you, when He tells you what to do, but He didn't say. You see, I think we all have grown up. Say, they use the word grown up. God doesn't need to tell me, I will provide for you, because I know He does. He doesn't need to tell me, I will heal you, because I know He does. You see, but in the beginning stages, you need to have promises for everything. But now I have grown up in God. When God tells me to go, I don't have to ask Him, but will you come with me? See, I'm no longer in Exodus chapter 3 status, you see. I'm now in Exodus 33. He has seen the face. So he doesn't need to have all these initial requirements with God. But some of us have not matured yet. We are still in our baby stage. We want God to give all these little things one by one. Come on, sign off. Do a checklist. Will you be me? Will you provide for me? Will you lead me? Will you guide me? Will you pay my bills? And Yeah, good, but then you're still there. 
Are you with me? Now, when we came and our children are come, the church is here, and uh, God, uh, Lord, do I have to have a church? I worship. You told me to plant a church. You didn't tell me we have to have worship. Uh, must we have prayer? You didn't tell me. Hello, when you plant a church, every works goes inside. You don't have to ask one by one unless you are a rookie. If you are a rookie, God won't tell you what to do. He won't tell you to plant a church because that requires maturity. Hello? Yeah. I got to follow that. Amen. Amen. I don't have to tell my church uh, family, oh, you're following me to America, right? I will provide for you food. There will be food in the kitchen. Don't worry. I don't have to tell my children that, man, because they know. The, when they come, you're already thinking, okay, where are we going to stop to eat? What we are going to do? Are you with me? So when you are walking with God, all those questions shouldn't be wondered about. Just praise God all the way through. Amen. That God's going to provide, He's going to make a way, He's going to do da 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 unless you have not grown up yet. then you can just start praising God for His providence rather than asking God like, you know, but I used to pray for five hours for a cup of tea. That was then. Now you have grown up. He's going to come by your way. Amen. And I've done that too. You see, when I say those things, I've done it. I prayed because I had no money. I got to pray for it. But now there are too many teas everywhere. So I don't have to pray. I just choose. So because he was in a, uh, we call it in counseling or psychology, the impasse moment, it got stuck. He, he, whether this way or that way, now God has to override his command and give him a charge. You shall follow what I'm telling you to do. It overrides Moses. It overrides uh, Aaron. It overrides Pharaoh. It overrides all the people who are standing there. Yeah. You see that, for a man of God, it takes a lot of courage to do because you may lose your license. If you do what God tells you to do, you may lose your denominational stand, status. You may lose your retirement. Because some people told me, you know, very close to retirement, just do what they're telling you to do. What? Then what about God? Your company retires you 62, but God doesn't retire you, bro. He takes you over. He adopts you. If eternal to eternity, you are with Him. Amen. Hello? Amen. Think about that. What about that? He doesn't stop. So he's teaching us how to rely. So the word, when God gives them a charge, oh, I tell you, now there is no way. Anybody's opinion matters not anymore. When God gives you a charge, it overrides every common sense. Amen. They got to know and respond to God. When he gives you a suggestion, he can put a, a simple thing in your heart. Like, uh, like uh, the signs that uh, Brother Mac was uh, giving. You know there are some signs, pay attention to those. God gives us signs. Amen? Amen. And so now in chapter 7, we have all the bigger confrontations that is coming by. So of course, our editors always wonder what is the title I'm giving. So confront the enemy before he comes after you. Confront the enemy. We are learning now. We are not waiting for the enemy to come and show up because that's our testimony before. We never knew the attack is going to come. But you know, as a child of God, every decision you make, there is going to be a possible attack. Yeah. Now, of course, you're not going to become a, a spiritual soldier, fruitcake, everywhere looking out for an attack. Whichever way, I'm going to rest in the Lord because I know my weapons. Yeah. Amen. Amen. The Bible says... In the book of Ephesians, the weapons of our warfare. But later Paul will say, put on the armor of light. So it's not necessarily a physical one by one. He upgrades when you're walking with God, when you're walking in the light of Christ. It becomes an armor of light. That means I don't have to worry. Every other little uh, 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 um, uh, contamination there, I'm not a scientist, I'm going to measure the air, but there is something about God that diffuses everything out that is coming from me. Coming from the world. He knows how to deflect it off from God, from us. Are you following? See, let God be God. Can you do that? Let God be God. Don't try to teach Him what to do. He's God Almighty. He's God Almighty. 
Oh, I remember, ah, man, when I, when I used to bring our children, when I used to go for the conferences, I, I bring all the kitchen signs, lap, measure the milk. How many times... When the children were small, we know when we do, uh, uh, when we had to, you know, uh, I think different cultures have different styles of doing different things. So basically, I know how many times I got to pull this up and down to cool it down for them to drink. I already counted that. It was about 75 times. <laughs> because the temperature was about 2 degrees Celsius, which is about, what, 28, 26 in Australia, out back. I brought the science lab because I know the things I need to bring for the children to drink, eat, whatever not. All of us do that, right? Then why do you think God doesn't know? Why do you think you need to tell God one by one? You see, there is an important idea between understanding that He's your God and then He's your Father. I'm asking all of us today, this Sunday morning, to upgrade your walk with God that is your father now. Not just a God who's out there. That you need to tell him one by one because that is a thinking of an idle concept, you see. In the early 80s, we had these uh, teachings on uh, the four dimensions of faith. I've thought, uh, talked about that uh, before. Um, this uh, by David Yonggi-Cho. At the time, was Paul Yonggi-Cho. So many teachers of faith, they brought in everybody's revelation and they cooked everything in a bigger pot. Now you have 3,000 formulas of how to get things done. Now, each person's concept was good for them and it worked for them and for many others, but God is not just about formulas. Are you with me? I said, formulas meaning to say, you ask God for a chair, but did you mention that you need two, four legs below? Did you say that? What? Because that's how it was then. Oh God, thank you, because he doesn't know mechanics. He doesn't, he's not an engineer. He's just a floatable float. So I got to specify. I need this God. Oh, it must be big sponge enough for, for me to sit. God, don't forget that. But now he is the Father, he is the Almighty, who knows everything. Amen? So I'm resting in the wisdom of God. I'm resting in the graces of God. And if you are a mature Christian this morning, and those who are watching online, I'm asking you to upgrade your heart. Upgrade your walk. Upgrade your understanding. Let there be some depth when you are worshipping God and praising God. I'm not worried whether the money will come or God. I'm thanking you, Father, for your providence. Thank you, you're healing me. Your health is all around me. Your wisdom comes into me. And Lord, I can see through you. I can think through you. And God, if anything should come, I could be alarmed because I'm still a human body. I will be affected. You see, my uh, ladies and gentlemen, how much so you open to the world, that much the world will come into you. I know some of the praying guys, they don't listen to this, they don't listen to that, they only pray because they don't want anything of the world to come into them. And so how do they know about the world? Their family will tell them about the news, what current events are happening. So they will be informed by the family. Otherwise, they are praying. They have accepted a certain position in God not to be bothered by anything outside that is going on. And there is nothing wrong with that. Are you with me? But if you have to be informed, you have to be informed. So now, Exodus chapter 7 gives us a few challenges, and I want to um, educate each one of us. Now, I'm full aware, I'm fully aware. When the guys were with me in the room, I said, I need to pray for a while, just with the moments with God now. The presence of God came. One of the things that came into my heart is I'm fully aware that people will not remember what I thought. We'll just forget. Because this is another sermon, another message, another Sunday. But I know that you are drawing from the heart of Christ to prepare what is going to happen in the coming days. We're going to put all of this in a book form now. Because this is one of the things that the Lord told me. 
publish everything that I'm teaching you from now. So there is something that is going to happen that we don't know. Amen? I don't have to know, but it will happen. Are you with me? So in Exodus chapter 7 verse 1, And the Lord said to Moses, See, I've made you like God to Pharaoh. And your brother Aaron shall be your prophet. I want to read until verse 4, then we will diagnose it, okay? Verse 2, you shall speak all that I command you, and your brother Aaron shall tell Pharaoh to let the people of Israel go out of his land. But I will harden Pharaoh's heart. And though I multiply my signs and wonders in the land of Egypt, Pharaoh will not listen to you. Then I will lay my hand on Egypt and bring my hosts, my people, the children of Israel, out of the land of Egypt by great acts of judgment. Think about that. Do you know some of us have been listening to God more because someone that you know, that you looked up to, was hardening in their heart. They didn't want to hear you, so he decided to talk to God. So you got to thank God for certain people in your life that hardened their heart and emotions. So now you're able to talk to God. You see, there are always some pharaohs in your life so that you can depend on God. Are you with me? Thank God for certain pharaohs, bro. <laughs> now you see, first number one to diagnose, which is verse one. The Lord said, see, I've made you like God to Pharaoh. Now the word God equals to Elohim in the Hebrew. Does it, mean, does it make you to become God? In Psalms chapter 82, we have the same uh, Greek uh, Hebrew de definition. And for a while in the uh, uh, early and the late 80s, we had this teaching going on that you are gods. And then we have some of the fruitcake preachers which are preaching now, I am God. I am God Almighty because God is in me. That is demonic possession type of talk. You understand? Yes. I, I hate to use this kind of word fruitcake, but I don't know what else to... Because the word false prophet, false teacher sounds very old. Fruitcake sounds something new. Ooh, wow, wow, it's a fruitcake. <laughs> <laughs> At least something new, something fresh. <laughs> don't give in to this. I'll give you why, because the Lord showed me this morning why. Lesson number one to learn in this first one is know your position, but don't abuse it. Like God doesn't mean you are God. Moses doesn't, uh, Pharaoh doesn't know who God is. No God can come and talk to him. You will not pay attention to Elohim. He doesn't have a relationship with God to hear from God. So I'm going to appoint you as my representative. You will be like, pay attention, like God. I'm going to speak to you. You go and speak to him. And because you are struggling all the time with stammering lips, so Aaron temporarily will become the prophet to speak to the people. Do you understand? Yes. Why do we say that? <clears throat> In the wilderness, the Bible says the Lord spoke to him as a prophet but in Exodus 33, when he went up and spent time with God for 40 days, something about his relationship, Moses and God, changed because now God says, I speak to him face to face like a friend. But do you realize from then on, the moment he left Egypt, you will not find that phrase again, Moses was like God to the people. You'll never find it. That permission was only given when he was in front of Pharaoh. You'll be like God. That means you are like me to him because he can only identify someone he can see. You see, this is an idol generation. What happens in Hinduism, Taoism, Buddhism, when people come from idol worship, they will always have to create something, someone to relate to. And some people, they come out and know Jesus, but their practices of idolatry in their mind, symbols are still there. 
So when we do ministry among those people, and when I say those, some of them I can, I've done, I've worked among them. So I'm not saying those means in a rude way. When we minister among people of such, then we have to understand the point of contact. Give an example point of contact, okay? The Bible says the Holy Spirit is in you. Do you believe that, right? That means you carry the oil of God as well. You don't have to have physically some oil all the time. Some people do. Some people always carry oil, anointing oil. Praise God, but if you don't get some anointing oil. But the Bible says, you know, when you pray for people who are sick, take some oil and attach. So the point of contact is now the oil. So when I go to pray for people, those who are uh, uh, from Hindu background, when you go there, uh, sanctify the home, we pray over a bowl of water. Because that's the way they, re, re, uh, they relate to, you see. You sprinkle water and they relate to it. Their faith is so into Christ, but they need some symbolism into it. you find throughout the scriptures, but do we live on that? No, we don't. So Moses was like God to Pharaoh. The moment he came out of Egypt, God just remained God, but God did not tell Moses anymore, you are like God to the people of Israel because there is, can only be one God. Somebody say amen. amen. There can only be one God. So for those of us in the ministry, there's a lesson point for you to know. There are some things that God will give you. Some anointings God will give you which are temporary. Some graces God will give you which are temporary. For example, let's say you are going through a spiritual warfare moment. For one month, one week, one year, whatever it is in your family, sometimes it comes like a package, your son, your daughter, your, your father, mother, everybody is going through something. So the whole year you are praying and fasting and pushing forward and you're, it alters your behavior patterns, you know. You're always in your warfare mode all the time. You don't eat much, you are fasting more than usual. You won't see this, you won't see that, you don't like chatter, you don't like group. You become very antisocial because you're going through a warfare moment in your life. But those are temporary seasons that God will create that's not a permanent call. That means those, don't let your personality change based on a temporary seasons. When you are released out back in Vintry, you switch back to become normal again. Are you with me? You cannot build a spiritual warfare ministry based on temporary seasonal graces. Many people lose their call, plant churches, and the churches close down because they are no longer in the temporary moments. And many people don't know because they feel that temporary moments is my identity. And that is why we cannot understand what church is this. The church of Jesus Christ. It's not like, oh, this church is called a spiritual warfare church. Have you heard all this before, right? This is an apostolic church. This is a prophetic church. I, I tell you, Jesus, my King, is the Lord's church, bro. Amen. We will have all these things that we have, but we want to belong to Jesus. It cannot be, we pray loud, we do this, we do that. Wow, this church was great. But the one thing I came for, I can't find. What is that? It was great worship, but where is Jesus, man? It was fantastic preaching, but where was Jesus in all the things that was being said? Because if God is there, the power and the presence of God will rest upon us. Amen. Into the degree that you want to sense. Are you with me? We cannot build a monument based on a temporary encounter. Now Peter had that challenged. He saw Moses and Elijah and Jesus talking up in the Mount of Transfiguration, Matthew chapter 17. So Peter asked Jesus, can I go and build three tents for you? Did Jesus allow? No. You don't build a tent based on temporary encounters. What's permanent is yours. Temporary are occasional moments when you're praying more, when you're seeking more. And many times when you're praying more than usual, you make a lot of promises you cannot keep. 
I'll pray more. I'll pray seven hours a day. I'll pray three hours a day. I'll read the Bible cover to cover every day. <laughs> that means they read the front cover and they read the back cover. <laughs> you make a lot of promises in your heightened moments. And usually, you'll feel very guilty the following week because you can't keep up because that's your, not your normal self. Are you with me? So this morning, I want to encourage you, know your normal self and upgrade the normal self. Not your heightened self. That heightened self is a spiritual preparation moment. You are praying more than usual because you are seeking God for something. In other, for example, let's say you've been fasting all day and say, God, I will, I will keep my fast deadline the whole year. The following week, someone is inviting you. Beef, cow, pig, seafood, the biggest crap. The other day, one brother told me, I don't know, I forgot who told me. Good things, I don't remember all these kind of things. We are eating the biggest crap leg ever before. Amen. Indian brother, biryani. <laughs> Are you with me? Then you say, God, why did I make those promises? <laughs> Praise God for God being God. He always deletes all your stupid promises because <laughs> he knows he doesn't mean it. He's just hyper-spiritual now. He's trying to be like God. Never mind, I'll forgive him. He's human. He's an idiot. <laughs> now, this is his normal self. He'll pray just five minutes a day. Okay, good for you, bro. Are you, isn't God good? That is why the Bible says, don't make a rash vow before God. Don't make a rash vow. You see, all my years of growing up, nobody taught me that. But I'm teaching you today. Nobody taught me that. My Father in heaven taught me. See, scriptures are powerful if you know how to read, how to understand. That is why when there are, for example, revival moments, Asbury, Revival is going on, and praise God for that. We talk about it. Praise God, brother. When JMK goes through seven days fasting, nobody talks about it. <clears throat> I wonder why. That's revival, right? Yes. Nobody talks about it. When is revival? Every Sunday. Who's the speaker? Michael. <laughs> He's always in a revival mode. Nobody talks about it. You should, guys, going to make it an internet sensation, man. Come on. <laughs> You can never come to JMK and go through a boring preaching. Never moment. No way. The word is impactful. Somebody say amen. Now I'm talking seriously about it. But we want exceptional moments, you see. Every time you build a monument based on exceptional moments, the revival dies. Because God is not going to keep the church in a revival mode. God wants to keep you and the church in a transformation mode. Amen. You are transformed by Christ. You are transformed by the Word. You are transformed by prayer. In revival, people will forget. But in transformation, it becomes your lifestyle. Amen. Are you with me? It's time to grow up. Amen. If not, we are no different from the Egyptians. We are no different from the people of Israel who never knew God. We, are, we like the hype. Oh God, come on. Why are you not reviving us like them? They don't know. Me, like you do. They need those moments. But you don't need, you are seeing me, you're talking with me, you're worshipping me, you can know me, you, you are in me, I am in you. Why do I need to give you that bolt of lightning all the time? Are you with me? So let's give ourselves great one, two, three, while you're listening to me, grade yourself where you are. It's okay. In order to grow, you need to, be know, you need to know where you are first. I like the baby moments, man. I tell you, sometimes I do ask God, Lord, you know, I wish like it will be those like 28 years ago. Oh, you used to speak to me. Okay, become 28 years ago behind. Crawl back. <laughs> you want to? No way. So, so don't ask that again. Thank God, my, our children don't ask me, I wish like, I would be like a baby. You can carry me like a baby. No, you are this tall. How to carry you again? <laughs> you carry me. <laughs> the only person I carry overhead even till today is Angeline Francis. <laughs> One hand, I lift her up like this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Are you following? It's a very important truth. Listen, church, God can do anything through JMK because it is His church, but we cannot build monuments on temporary revivals. We have to know who we are at the end of the day. We have to cover the all aspects of Jesus. Oh, pastor, why are we not having healing meetings like the way we used to have? It was a grace that God has given. Now we are learning how to walk in healing. Do we believe in healing every Sunday? Yes, we do. But is it a healing crusade every Sunday? No, it's not. You are not an unbeliever. Oh, but but well, we, we did not have the word of knowledge. Someone say, there is someone uh, who needs healing. Please come. No, you are not a non-believer to do that. This is God's house. You are God's child. Come forward and say, I need prayer. You see? Because we are not growing up. We want those kind of moments. We want God to tuck your shirt and pull you like a bull. I feel the tuck of the Lord. We want that kind of testimony. You don't want, the Lord says, go. And then you're just obediently going. You don't want that. But those are grown up sons and daughters, you see. The Bible says those who are led by the Spirit are called what? See, sons of God. But those who have accepted Christ in the book of John chapter 3, the Bible says he gives them the power to be the child of God. The Greek word is different. A child of God. But those who are led by the Spirit are called the sons of God, grown ups. So there is something about us that we must change if we are to see the maturity that we want before God. And then number two, you see, you shall speak all that I command. Do you like God's commandments? You see, the word first verse tells us, you'll be like a God. And then the second verse tells us, now you shall do what I command. Now, Moses will know God is still God. Because if I am God, 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 you just told me I'm, I'm God. Why are you commanding me? Hello? Are you finding all the catchphrases here? Just because you can hear from God doesn't mean God cannot tell through another person that you look up to to listen to God's commands. We don't like the word command. I'm not commanding you. Are you commanding me? Yes, because he's God Almighty. He's not suggesting you a little bit. He's commanding you now. In commanding means your thinking of the natural doesn't matter anymore. Go and do what God tells you to do. Are you following Are you learning something? You are under God's command. It makes you a servant to the master. He is God. Then the interesting part. God tells Moses to go. And then the scripture says, I will harden his heart. That's nice. Go and apply the job. But I will harden the officer's heart. (laughs) Wow, nice. Why do you tell me to go through all this emotional thing? Myself, tell me, don't go. That is why you can find Christians, man, blinding people in the office. I blind their eyes that they cannot see my application. I deafen their ear, they cannot hear my voice. Oh, I tell you, all kinds of voodoo fellas will go and apply, you know. Some of you are not praying warriors. They are, you, you do voodoo stuff. Because a child of God doesn't pray like that. You know what the child of God will do? Lord, I release God's favor, God's love, God's mercy. Let them feel the power of God. That's what the Christian child of God will pray. Not binding this and binding that. The one who's taking your interview is not a demon from hell. It's another child. Hello? Stop praying the wrong side. You're no longer in Egypt. You're out of the game. People were so... A surprise. They thought Pharaoh was giving me like a slave. When they came out in the wilderness, they realized they were their own slaves. No longer Pharaoh. You see, some of us, we always find people to blame for. You know, I was like that because of my mother. I was like that because of my father. I was like that because of my neighborhood. And God removes everything and come, you're still behaving the same way. Now it's you, right? Can you see it? Are you following? It's time to grow up. I will harden his heart. The Lord showed me some miracles will only happen when situations and people around you harden their heart. 
You only learn how to pray for providence when the providence are pulled out from you. It's not that it's not it's within the reach, but God wants you to stretch. <laughs> oh, come on! Sometimes we wrestle with our little kids. We are teaching them how to wrestle and pull and push. They are using their muscles. I don't know if you used to wrestle with your children. Yes. Jeff. Oh, it's girls. So what? <laughs> Gentle wrestling. <laughs> they may not wrestle, you get a slap. <laughs> I have a lot of time wrestling with our children. It was the time when uh, uh, Transform- uh, Transformer movie came out. So uh, uh, the elder boy Samuel was, uh, I think, 10 years old, and suddenly he will transform. You will start fighting with me. <laughs> what? What was the sound, man? Oh, the transformer. <laughs> I miss all these little moments playing games. But you see, sometimes God allows many stories that you give about God. Now, I also was wondering, and I was telling Angeline just now. Now I have to doubt each time when uh, this Christine, she told me, Pastor, when I see you, I see a glow on your face. Now, you know, it may not be really a glory glow. It was the eye that needed to. <laughs> I thought the glow was all over me. <laughs> oh, God, I feel up, man. I feel the glory, bro. No, it's the cataract. <laughs> nah, just joking. <laughs> Thank God for Pharaoh because Moses became Moses because of Pharaoh. The people saw God's miracles because of Pharaoh. God did not give easily into Moses. Uh, God did not give easily into Pharaoh. God gave them a hard time. So Moses, this Pharaoh will come with all his might and God will show who is mightier. My brothers and sisters, we have not seen enough of God, you know. Some of us, we give God too easy. We just let him go too easy. So God allows things to be hardened, your application to be hardened, your application will be canceled, the bank will say no, this guy that you're about to borrow will turn no, your friend will turn into a foe, but all of them are players in the hand of God. He's grooming you up to pray, to have faith, to push through, to fast. He removes that feeling of food out of your tongue. He's calling you and drawing you to fast. Have you ever noticed that? I don't know how you go through. When I'm going to fast, whatever I eat, it will not taste for me. It just go, it's not COVID, it's God. <laughs> the moment I go through that, I know, okay, it's fasting time. I'll just withdraw from all this and go into fasting mode. I don't have to wonder, struggle through all this. Doesn't matter what it is. And then you'll find, I will multiply, say the word multiply. I will multiply signs and wonders. God is speaking to his people through his word and his spirit. Because the, 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 the other theology don't believe in signs and wonders. Oh, we don't need that. We need the word and the spirit. No, it is nice. God does do signs and wonders. The word and the spirit is in us. Signs and wonders are for the people of the world. But he also excites you by looking at those signs and wonders. Amen. And I will what? Multiply. Every time you pray, listen. I want you to listen carefully. When you pray, God, multiply signs and wonders in my life, Pharaoh will show up. Because it requires a certain energy to pray and to persist, and to press forward. Some of the things that you are praying for, you want to have breakthrough in people's salvation, you are praying for other people, and you are praying that, you know, the demons will let go in the life of certain children, or uh, habits, or drugs, or pornography, or uh, lustfulness, whatever that you are praying, those demons that controls them will show up in front of you. You must be willing and ready to engage. Because you're stirring up the hornet's nest. And you don't want the hornets. It doesn't work that way, in it? 
And so God allows those moments in our life. And as a church, let's become very accustomed to the ways of God. When we go into a prayer mode, let's go engage all the time. Somebody say, Amen. Well, when we are looking forward, is God multiplying? Multiply. Then the next thing God tells him in verse 4, Pharaoh will not listen to you. Then why are you telling me all this if Pharaoh will not listen to me? I don't know whether this whole deal of the story is God teaching Moses to follow God. Not about Pharaoh. It's about the training process. Moses was going through. He will not listen to you. Lord, if he will not listen, why must I go and say? Your job is to say. You are obeying my command. Amen? We want it so easy, you see. When Andrew Murray was, uh, David Livingston, when he was in Africa doing ministry, he wrote to the church board in America, please send more missionaries because there are plenty of people who needed to hear the gospel. So they wrote back and asked him the question, okay, is there road? How do you travel? What about the pandemic and the diseases? There were, you know, uh, all kinds of diseases and mosquito problems, and mosquito problems were uh, spreading. And uh, he, they wrote to him, please tell us when all these things are over, we will send lots of missionaries. Then David Livingstone wrote back, if you want to come, all when after it's gone, please don't come. Because now is the time they need to see the power of God. When there are no roads, you have to cross. When there are no ways, you have to cross through a boat. When it's all, it's not nice condition. You, you may skip and fall, but you need to walk through. Are you with me? One of, our, uh, 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 one of the brothers who was an associate pastor in our church in Singapore when God was opening the door, we have to release him to do bigger works for the Lord. So we release him for our pastoral position. Then he went to plant churches in India, in Nepal, in different locations. One of these remote locations that he went in Nepal was in the middle of the night, through heavy raining, the truck would not be able to go up anymore because all the water was pushing the, the, the stones and the gravel all the way down. The truck was skidding away. So they decided now they want to walk a couple of miles up in the night to reach the village for the meeting. And while he was walking through, you know, some of these fellas, man, no matter how many times I tell them dress properly, they won't listen. <laughs> because when he came back to Singapore, he was telling me this whole story. I felt like I'm taking a knock his head or something. He said, I felt, ouch, while he was walking. It could be a gravel, it could be this, could be that, could be this, could be that. The leg began to swell. He preached. He felt nausea, brought him to the clinic, nearby small village clinic. It was a snake bite. While he was walking up, the snake bit him. He didn't know what was going on because they were all, you know, dark. Mine was into the missions and the meetings. He was rushing up. And, and the clinic doctor said, there's no way how you are alive. We just don't know how you're alive. You shouldn't be alive. Because the nearest town is five hours down the stream. You're already up. They have to put some injections, take the poison out, and they did the normal thing, but nothing happened to this fellow. That, that was the first time. I think the next time we'll take torchlights everywhere. <laughs> first time is always a miracle. Next time, <laughs> it's foolishness. Better do it. Are you with me? You see, God multiplies signs and wonders. At the moment, you are desperate for him in a situation. Yeah, the Bible says, Pharaoh will not listen to you. But you're still supposed to say, articulate what you're supposed to be saying. Look at the anointing that was given to Jeremiah. You will be a prophet, but they will not listen to you. Look at the anointing given to Ezekiel. You will be a prophet. He was taken up to heavens and he saw a lot of things. But when he came back to the people, God said, they will not listen to you, but I will make your head like bronze. In other words, you will not fear even if they are not listening. You will still speak my word. Look at the ministry of Jesus. When Jesus was preaching, there are always fellows who are taking notes how to kill him. 
how to trap him. And if you're a too softy, uh, uh, they commented this, I don't want this church, I don't want this ministry, I'm going back again. Going back to who? To the world? You see? You want God to use you. Then he will train you. When you sign up, sign up well. No clauses. No matter who says what, it is your crown. Hello? Your crown is waiting for you. Nobody told me I will go through sickness. Don't worry about what you are going through. Push forward in Jesus' name. Somebody say. Especially for those who are after school, when you go to your first job, those fellows who are interviewing you are not angels. (laughs) They'll become monsters throughout the week. (laughs) You'll learn how to work in hostile environments. But God's grace is growing in you. Somebody say amen. I want to finish with this. Oh, it's 12. It's still 12. What? I thought it's 1. James chapter 1 verse 2 to 4. The book of James chapter 1. Are you learning something? I will tell you why I'm taking some time to talk about this. I'll give you the conclusion. Then you will see the importance of what we are talking about. What God had to do. James chapter 1 was uh, two, count it all joy. I always thought James has lost his mind somewhere along the way. <laughs> this is one of those fruitcake guys, you know. What do you mean count it all joy, my brothers? When you meet trials of various kinds, at one time, one time I say, yeah, brother, easy to tell my brothers, go and tell it to the girls. Count it all joy, my sisters, when you meet trials and various kinds. It's just a joke. For you know that the testing of your faith, what? What? Oh, do you know the word? There is a word called produce. The testing of your faith, what? Produces steadfastness. The Amplified Bible will say endurance. And then now he's saying, okay, good to know, praise God. I'm being squeezed. And verse 4 now tells you. And let steadfastness, what? That means I must allow myself to be squeezed. I must continue in the trials. I must persevere through that situation. It's temporary, but some temporary looks like in eternity. Especially like when the aircraft is going to land, you become nausea, you're throwing up. It feels like the aircraft is never landing because you're throwing up. You're not enjoying it anymore. How can they say this? Verse 4, and let, L-E-T. Say the word let. Now this let has to do everything with your emotion. Nothing to do with God. Nothing to do being felt let by. Nothing. It is about you allowing God to do what He is doing. You are emotionally prepared. I'm going through this. Let steadfastness have its full effect. That you may be perfect, complete, lacking nothing. That means God knows you have a challenge ahead of you. God knows in your life and my life, there are different challenges that we're going to face, right? God knows that. In order to face challenge number eight, he's preparing you in challenge number three or four already. So he's saying, you please endure, don't let it go, let it create some perfections in you so that you are complete. When you face challenge number eight, you are lacking nothing anymore. You will overcome that point. But we don't, we struggle, we give up. We walk away. We are too easy to walk away. This generation is a generation of convenience. Tell the devil to walk away, whether he does or not. Tell the devil to stop killing babies, whether he does or not. But he doesn't, you see. So in order for him to kill the babies, he educate us how to do it. Yourself. (laughs) Are you following? Let steadfastness have his perfect way. Uh, Just for your scripture understanding, 
How can I be perfected? Number one, the Bible says, James 1, 3, our testings, the things that you're going through in your life. Whatever the testing is, write it down. This is a test I have to go through. I've noticed that sometimes a loving church can become a, a comeback area. God is testing our love. Loving, forgiveness, enduring, steadfastness, long-suffering. All of that season the church will go through. There is no such thing you can say the church is a living church if the church has not gone through a test. Because love is an outcome. Hello? It's a produce of something. And what was the produce? Challenges, differences, opinions, comments, ungodly moments in the flesh. At the end of the day, we still stood firm in love. Are you with me? You cannot, don't comment when the, the couple is a loving couple. They also love it, Debbie. They are enjoying the photo. They are taking photos up the mountains. Oh, nice to know. When you comment someone as a loving couple, comment it after they have caused through about 25 years of marriage life. That is the loving couple who did not give up on one another regardless of the ugliness, regardless of, of the flesh, regardless of the scenery changing into a boring life now. Are you following me? Because love is not measured by all these things, man. It's measured by you and I. That is a loving because the word loving couple was a result of a produce. Something happened along the way. Now we say this is a loving couple. If we don't measure this way, then we get all kinds of measurements and we become discouraged. The Bible says in verse 4, endurance produces a perfected faith. Number three, Philippians chapter three, verse five, it says, let these thoughts be in you. That means the way you think produces your faith. Philippians chapter three, verse five. Oops. Did I quote you wrongly? I could have. Let me check. <clears throat> 3.15. Please. Ah. Let those who are mature, let me quickly put that here. Okay. Let those who are mature, how? The word mature in the Greek is perfect. Teleos is the same. Let those who are perfect, perfect think this way. Then if you are mature, you will think a certain way. You are not an average Joe to get offended. Are you listening? Uh, 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 Pastor Jeff and I, we were uh, talking about some matters and discussing, and we had some Bible stuff we were talking about. We talk about condemnation and no condemnation, you know, Romans chapter 8. Uh, it was a very interesting discussion that we had. And there the Holy Spirit stood beside me, and he gave me a definition. You want to hear that? Yes. Okay. There is therefore now no condemnation to him who is in Christ. Okay. So the, those who are not in Christ, that is condemnation. Correct? Those who are in Christ don't have condemnation. And if you're all the time fighting between condemnation and guilt feelings, I want to know where you are now. Here or there? It's very easy now to think which way you are in. Where you are twisting yourself in. You cannot say I'm in Christ and you're saying this. That means the salvation experience is not complete. The thinking process has not changed. You have an idolatry form of Christianity, not a relational aspect of Jesus in your life. Amen. Very deep thoughts to think with. And I need to deal with this, you see. Because coming from our, our Asian background, there's a lot of guilt and condemnation all the time. What you never do, what you never do, what you never do. I decided when I grew up never to defend God. When someone is sick and I don't know why, I will not tell them you are lacking in faith. That's why. Some people don't lack in faith. We just don't know why they are not healed. Oh, let me tell you why. I know why you're not healed, brother. Uh, have you been giving your sights and offerings faithfully? That's the other thing we will ask a question. Because God is a gangster. You don't give money, he's going to send the demons and whack you up, man. 
Some people have this uh, idea that God is a New York gangster, you know. <laughs> He's the Italian mob. You don't give. These demons are working for him in the night. They will come. Daytime angels are working. <laughs> Because we have preached God and represented him wrongfully. Are you, are you following? He's waiting for us to change. And that happens. Oh, Baba, why did that preacher say, I'm not talking about preachers anymore. I'm talking about you and your walk with God. But you know, Balaam was kicked by a donkey. I've told God, I'm not Balaam. Don't send a donkey. I'm your son. Tell me and I'll listen to you. I'm not that backslidden For a donkey to kick me. I'm your son. I will, the moment you come and stand, I will bow before you. You see, I've conditioned my heart to respond to his person, not just signs. I want him. Don't give me a signal. You stand there, you come. The other day I met my brother. We were talking about something in this hall. Halfway in the middle of a very important conversation. Okay, I got to go. Whew, he goes away. I'm waiting there two hours. Then he came up. Hello. How come he just walked away? You know, the Lord came and he tapped on my shoulder. He said, come to the room. I want to talk to you. <laughs> Was the Lord here? <laughs> Why didn't the Lord tell me to walk away? <laughs> I think God was very polite. <laughs> you come, go to the room. <laughs> Are you listening? Oh my goodness. Can we come into that relationship with God? Absolutely. But if you grow up, you can't. So the third thing to perfect my faith is that I start thinking God's pattern of thoughts. Think the right way. And that's the fourth one. Hebrews chapter 5 verse 14 says that you need to grow in the word of God. When I grow in the word of God, my faith is growing with me. Hebrews 5, solid food is for who? The mature. For those who have their powers of discernment trained by constant practice to distinguish good from evil. Solid food, the mature. Food is for the mature. And the fifth one, one, two, three, four, five. That one, may, we may not like it. James chapter three, verse two. I tell you, we really have to talk to James, man, I tell you. He said, if you want to be perfect, control your tongue. Oh, God. We all stumble in many ways. And if anyone does not stumble in what he says, he's a perfect man. Talios, mature, able to bridle his whole body. And 1 John chapter 4, verse 18, if you want to be perfected in your faith, walk in love. Do you realize that these four, five, six points that I gave you can find yourself whether you're on level one, two, or three. Those who say you're on level three, this scripture now applies to you. Not, not uh, 1 John 2, 1 John chapter 4, verse 18. There is no fear in what? But what? What love? What love? And so it's not the human love. It is not the stoje. It's not family. It's agape. In that love, there is no longer fear. You see, God wants his church to mature to agape level because the world is going to stumble us in the coming days. Do you have time? I'll show you about that and then we conclude this time. Is that okay? Yes. You see, if you don't go through this process, when God is judging the world, you and I are going to be stumbled. Do you realize that you never got stumbled when you're reading the Bible, but when you're reading Google, you get stumbled. You're questioning God based on Google information, but God didn't stumble you. You never get stumbled after praying. You always get stumbled after talking to people. But when you're praying, you're so confident when you walk out, God will do it. But then you talk to everybody throughout the week. That faith now got stumbled because you were talking about what God told you he will do for you. Some of the times you just have to keep your mouth shut. If God said it, he will do it. You don't have to tell anybody. 
Hello. God is going to use me around the world. Sure, go to Shelby first. Then we talk about the world now. Nobody will believe you. I will not believe myself. <laughs> Are you following? So Matthew chapter 24, let's go for a very quick end time uh, route. Very quick. Because Jesus said this and he showed me why the children of Israel were stumbled. He's teaching us how not to be stumbled. Tell your neighbor, pastor is talking about you. Those who have, don't have neighbor, God bless you. <laughs> Are you learning something? Yes. Matthew 24, the disciples came in the night. They wanted to talk to Jesus privately. And they asked him a question about all the signs that is about to happen. You see, as long as Jesus was with them, they didn't need any sign. They were following God in the flesh. Now Jesus was about to be taken away. So they were asking for a sign, verse 3. And he said on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, tell us when will these things be and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? Jesus answered, first one. See that no one, what? First, first sign. Make sure you're walking right with me. Now listen, I don't have time to talk about everything, but I'm going to give you points. Write it down. Look at the episode again. Write it down on your notebook, okay? Number one, no one leads you astray. Uh, astray. Verse five, the next verse. False Christ are going to lead many astray. In other words, many false messiahs will appear. Now I've got to look out for that as well. Number three, see that you are not alarmed. What's happening at the moment? Something goes on, the church gets alarmed. A virus is spread, we, our faith gets stumbled. Where is God? God is always there. Why are you getting stumbled? Oh, now they shot down the, the uh, a balloon. Okay. Aha. So. Are you following? Don't get stumbled. The Bible says, all these are going to happen. Jesus gave us a sign. See that you are not what? Verse 6, all this must take place. Remember the word, must take place. In other words, your prayer cannot stop it. Your godliness cannot stop it. It must. Why? Because God said so. Verse 7, for nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. In other words, CNN and FBI and ABC and everybody news channel that you know are going to report about all this. And if you have subscribed for about 10 news channels, you die reading the same thing. You know, when you read twice, your faith is still strong. Third time, you are still defending. Fourth, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, you're already, oh God, is going to come on us. You are crumpling down. In the present days, you'll be much more stronger if you switch off and unsubscribe to stupid channels. Are you with me? Verse 8. This will be the beginning of birth pangs. If you don't know what it is, ask your wife. Ask a woman who have gone through birth pangs. That's what it is. All these are but the beginning of birth pangs. Verse 9, then they will deliver you up to tribulation. Now, these problems that is outside will come inside the church. Arrests and trials of any kind that you can think about. You are a Christian, you may lose a job. You are a Christian and you are so hyper, you may lose a promotion. You are all the time making a stand, so you will be put behind. We cannot grow up with a persecuted mentality, but however, these are real. Are you with me? Hey, if you're a Christian, you got no place to work in a bar. Do you understand? Oh, I'm here going to reach out to the lost. You will be lost as well. Don't be silly. 
It's a lot of fellows who have made the wrong decision. They are working in this year and that and they lose their salvation. Oh, but they give a lot of tips. You want to tip yourself to hell, is it? Huh? It's better to remain poor and walk towards the kingdom of heaven. Define what is poor, I don't know. I think I have a lot at home to eat. That means I'm rich. What about bank account? Doesn't matter. I've got food to eat. I'm rich. We've got a loving family. We are rich. I've got a happy chicken. I am rich. <laughs> okay. You see, uh, Charlene, what you're missing? You see? <laughs> now, praise God, you're going to overcome this, okay? It's a season you're going through. You have been doing well. Verse 10, look at verse 10, Matthew chapter 24. And many will fall away. Hey, are you listening? This is going to affect us. Many will fall away and what? And what? I know, tell me, after that what? Tell me you are not affected by this scripture now. That hatred will affect you. It's going to challenge your love. Everybody's hating you. You have to have a lot's dosage of love to keep pushing forward. People will start betraying one another. You know, sometimes you watch all these kind of uh, reality shows like Survivor and all the games are nice, but they need to be conniving. They need to be betraying one another's trust. And that's not the type of things I want to watch, man. Because they are training you now how to walk in deceit. How to betray your friends by actually eating together. We have a very old phrase I think the world is forgetting. Don't bite the hand that feeds you. You remember that? Very old phrase, man. But I think it still works. It's a statement of honor and respect. You see. But the Bible says, tell me the church will not get affected. Yeah, you will have. People will be falling away. Your friends that you know, some of the people that we know or we love will be walking away from Jesus. Falling away. The trend. You see, the stars are already doing it now. Hollywood, many Christians start off singing in gospel song. They're all falling away because of stardom. Because of popularity. Because of public life. And what the church do? You go and fight in the same area. Showing yourself more public. That's where people are falling. Just recently I asked the Lord. The Bible says you and I are made in the secret place of the Most High. Correct? Tell me in the present generation of prophets or prophetic people. What is a secret? When they pray, they tell the world. When they, God speaks to them, everything they tell the world. There's no longer secrets between God and the prophets anymore. What God tells you in secret, you publish it in Instagram and whatever gram and all the gram. <laughs> what is the secret now? You are hidden with God. What part of it is it? I am made in the secret of God. Where? Which part is called a secret? So when there is full exposure then the makings of God will be lacking in the present generation. Do you understand that, my brothers and sisters? You've got to weigh this matter very carefully. There are things we will do and preach. We don't go online. We are made in the secret place of the Most High. Many people want us to go online on Tuesday morning prayer meeting. I refuse to do it. This is a moment with God. You want to come and join us, but we will not make it online. When I'm crying and weeping and praying for nobody to see, bro. When I'm talking with my Savior. When I'm pouring my heart, it is my moment. Of course, you can say, well, people will be touched. Then come here and be touched. Yeah. There is something about me. I'm going to protect my time with God. Yeah. My secret place with the Most High. Then, now the Lord is saying, there's going to be false prophets. Now it all comes inside the church. Matthew 24, verse 11, verse 12, lawlessness will increase, which is already happening. And then the love of many will grow cold. Why am I 
teaching you this? Why did the Lord show me that? He said, our faith will be affected by the happenings of the world in the end time. It's not what's inside the church that's going to affect you. What's outside? You will bring that garbage which is outside and bring it inside the church and get yourself confused. We want to address the world's issues. Some churches are almost like a newscasting churches. They're almost like the, the pastor, instead of being a pastor and a man of God, the fellow speaks like a journalist, quoting every news. Why do we need the world's news? Inside the sacred place of God. Amen. If you want to take CNN role, then tell that journalist to become the pastor. Give her the Bible. Do you understand what I'm saying? A pastor, but we need to be updated with the current news. Watch CNN if you want to, but here, let's be updated with what God is doing. What the Spirit of God is about to do. How God is going to train us in the secret place. How God is going to power pack us with His faith. How God is going to teach us to walk in supernatural abundance, health and healing. God is going to help us to believe and nothing is available anymore because God is working on His remnant while the world is going the other side. Don't put your eyes on the world. And it's a very critical thing that the Lord said. Why was the children of Israel stumble? Because they were looking at all the other circumstances instead of putting their faith in the God who brought them out. You think, let's give them an excuse. I try to defend them when I think about them many times, when I'm writing, when I'm thinking, when I'm processing my, my concept, conceptual Theology. See, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm, you know, how do I represent them? So I thought, okay, give them a break. They don't know about God. They don't know miracles. Probably they don't know that God, uh, didn't know that God can provide water from the rocks. Do you get what I'm saying? So I try to excuse them. But you see, they are very used to Moses, uh, Pharaoh doing false miracles. They have seen it many times. That is why when there was a miracle, every time Moses will do something, Pharaoh will say, this is a cheap trick, guy. let me do it again. I don't want to go into the water from next week, I think I'll be going, talking to you every week. Each week we're going to talk about one of the plagues that took place. Why did God allow those things to happen? And what are we supposed to pay attention for? What are those things we're going to learn for in our life? As I said, you will forget after a while. You must write it inside your spirit, man. That you are not stumbled about what is going on around us. Another big virus is going to come, whether you like it or not. You don't get fruit to have a freak. Oh, I'm going to make my house like a shelter. No, no, no. Listen, you're going to walk in a supernatural faith. Amen. There is something about you. God is going to defend you. I, 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 when Angeline was preaching about, I preached the, uh, that, the message in 19... Uh, in year 2000, sorry, 1998 in Australia, and they kicked me out from the church, that God is a man of war. Years before my spirit and my mind could understand, the Lord spoke to me then, preached to the church, I am a man of war. And so when Angeline quoted that scripture, my spirit just came alive. If God is a man of war, you think you're going to lose. Come on, man. You think you're going to be on the losing side if he is the commander of the army of God? He's trained. He knows what to do. He knows how to fight in the heavens when Lucifer fell. He created a pit just for him and created a place called hell. The molten lava which is in the center of the crust of the earth, it's not meant for demons, you know. It's energy processing for earth. But nothing can come near. You will melt. I tell you what, Lucifer, that's your place. You go. Amen. It's reserved for you. You will not see the goodness of my being anymore. You will only see my wrath. Those days are gone. If God is a man of war, you think we are going to be on the losing side. But we have been thought like that all the time. 
we will be hunted, we will be hiding, we will be this, we will be that. Oh, there will be a time to hide, but there will be a time you will hear the trumpets call and you will fight. Some will fight with our bodies, some will fight on your knees, some will fight with your finances, you will be giving, you will be doing stuff, but you are all enlisted in the army of God. Are you with me? I'm excited about revival, but all that I'm interested in is what revival make people to become. If they are becoming softies, then that is really not the revival we are looking for. It must transform you. Something must happen to you. Are you with me? I'm asking you to open your heart so that God will touch you this morning. We have, long, we have gone almost about an hour. We have struck, slightly crossed that hour. But you see, the preaching of God's word builds faith into your life. Strengthens you, stretches you. I'm going to conclude now. Exodus chapter 7 and verse 5. Just look at the line. We'll pray together. Exodus chapter 7 and verse 5. The Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord. Oh, God. The entire process, God was never to show off who he is, is for them to know God is God. The whole earth is going to go through birth banks, not for you. They must know he is God. You already know. That is why during the times of judgment, you will see the goodness of God. You will share with others what God is doing. You're no longer afraid of what you don't have because you know when you give it to them, the angels will come and fill you up. Amen. Honestly, uh, uh, let me tell you an interesting chicken story. <laughs> One of my chicken had uh, some kind of uh, infection. I called Dr. Roger, took, took a photo because he's walking like a penguin. You know, so that's actually a virus. Sometimes they tend to lay eggs and the egg doesn't come out. It goes within the back itself. And so when the heaviness goes there, they will stand up and, and they will walk like a penguin. I was very hurt, very sad because one of that first group that we had raised up. I looked at it and I said, I'm supposed to bring it to Dr. Roger. I said, well, let me try this before I bring it. I said, be healed in Jesus' name. Be healed. From the next day onwards, just running back like a chicken. Even yesterday, I was feeding, cleaning up, and I was like, okay, where is that chicken? Is it okay? He's all back and running. Now, I didn't lay hands, man. Don't lay hands and do that. They'll freak out, right? Just look at them and speak the word, and it shall take place. Somebody say what? If the chickens can be healed because they are creations of God, how much more you and I in God's presence, amen? Can we all stand up together? The Egyptians shall know that I am God. Some of the problems you are going through in your workplace. Your company will know who your God is. Our children can be antagonized by their friends and peers in school. Instead of running away, learn to pray. You don't have to kill yourself. You don't have to express in the Facebook. You don't have to tell in the Instagram and nobody else is looking. Go up to the presence of God and make your needs to be known. God will fight for you. There are medical reports. You know, some of the things about the older fellows is this. We are not used to sharing to anybody. Some of the things as fathers and mothers, when you go through stuff and medical reports, you don't even tell your children what you're going through. You're very silent and you bring it before God. Today, let me remind you, the God who watches from heaven will answer you speedily. Touch you, strengthen you, heal you, bless you, create miracles for you, that you and I can be His testimonies. The Word, the Bible says, they will know I am God. God loves you. God wants to do that for you. All of us will go through moments that you talk so much about God but nothing else is happening in your life. But let God do something for you this Sunday, today.
that He can show I am God in your life. Make a promise to God that I will not be stumbled by what's happening in the world. The children of Israel were stumbled almost at everything because everything was provided for, even in slavery. We will go through some testings, but we put our eyes on Jesus. Take a few moments and worship the Lord. Hey friends, thank you so much for watching this message. We trust that you've been tremendously blessed. If you have not done so, subscribe to the YouTube channel of Jesus My King, for we will be posting many more insightful programs that will surely help you in your journey with God. Tune in every Sunday at 10 a.m. Eastern Time for our live Sunday service here from Shelby, North Carolina. God bless and we'll see you soon. God has given us strategies and training through the anointing of fragrance and prayer. To make a purchase, visit us online at stephenfrancis.org.